When you think about it, the heart really is a fist-sized powerhouse that pumps fresh oxygen and nutrient-rich blood through our bodies to keep us alive. And since February is American Heart Month, we wanted to talk about important tests to help determine if you might be at risk for heart disease. Joining me now is Dr. George Spivak, a cardiologist at Midstate Medical Center. Doctor, I think a lot of people are aware that heart disease is the number one killer for men and women, but what they might not be aware about is that it's so preventable. Uh Definitely, there's a lot that can be done to prevent heart disease from happening in the first place, mm -hmm. but also a lot that can be done to control heart disease and uh, uh, once it's been diagnosed and limit the chance that heart disease can cause you further trouble in the years ahead. Okay, so what is the moment or what is the sign that we should call a doctor? Um, well, the, the symptom we get most concerned about or the classic symptom is chest pain. And it's often uh, uh, described as a weight or pressure or heaviness on the chest. It's located usually centrally. It can sometimes spread or radiate to your, down your left arm, your neck, your shoulders, sometimes to the mid-back. There can be some accompanying or associated symptoms, typically shortness of breath, possibly a sense of nausea, or even uh, s severe sweating, what we call diaphoresis. And those are the classic symptoms, but not everyone's heart has read the textbook. <laughs> and particularly women or sometimes uh, people who have diabetes might have what we call atypical or different symptoms when their heart is acting up. They may just have an uneasy or uncomfortable sensation or, or heaviness in the chest. Um, they may have no chest pain at all. They may just have the arm pain or the mm -hmm. back pain. Or they may have no pain and just feel short of breath with activity or severe tiredness with activity and something being off that is the clue that something may be happening. Sure. So something along those lines happens and then a doctor orders a test. What typically is the first test? Yeah, well, the first test you're going to start with is an electrocardiogram. It's a good all-purpose sort of wet your pinky, hold it up to the wind to see how the heart is doing. It's a simple thing to do. It just involves having a few wires or electrodes placed on your chest and that measures the electro electrical activity within your heart. There's a lot of information we can get from that as a starting point. It tells us about the rhythm of the heartbeat as to whether you're having any irregularities or arrhythmias that could be a sign of heart disease. It can show the effects of high blood pressure on the heart. It can show if someone may have had a heart attack in the past. Mm -hmm. And if an EKG is done while someone is having active chest pain, it can show the signs of an acute myocardial infarction that would require immediate and at times life-saving medical treatments. And it's a painless procedure? Painless, no, no muss, no fuss. No. And okay, and then now let's move on to the echocardiogram. All right. An echocardiogram is a very useful technique to get a lot of information about one's heart. It's an ultrasound uh, test of the heart where we use sound waves to image the heart. Uh, most people are familiar that when a woman is pregnant, she'll have a sonogram to see what the baby looks like. Mm -hmm. This is the same technology, but instead of aiming the sound waves at a baby in the womb, we can just aim it up at the heart and take mm -hmm. images of the heart. It tells us about the size and strength of your heart. It can show damage that may have occurred in a previous heart attack. It tells us how your heart valves are doing to see if there are any issues there that could be causing your symptoms. Again, it's a very safe, easy test to go through. Um, there's no special preparation. We put a few of those wires or electrodes on your heart and just rub a microphone gadget on the skin over the heart and make a picture using sound waves. Okay, and then I think a lot of our viewers have probably heard of a stress test. All right. If chest pain is the concern, and the concern is do you have coronary artery disease or a blocked artery in the heart, uh, the stress test is the way we start. There are a variety of different stress tests we might do. The starting point is a standard exercise stress test, mm -hmm. and that's the medical equivalent of taking your heart out for a test drive. <laughs> Again, we'll have you hooked up to some wires or electrodes similar to an electrocardiogram and take you for a walk on a treadmill. We'll start at a modest pace with a slight incline, and over the course of several minutes, based on your degree of physical conditioning, we'll raise the treadmill up, get it going faster, get you working harder, get you huffing and puffing, and get your heart in the left lane going above the speed limit and see how it performs. We see if you're having symptoms, we see how your blood pressure is doing, and we can look for characteristic changes that might occur on the electrocardiogram that might tell us whether or not uh, you have underlying coronary artery disease. Okay. And though the stress test is a very handy test, it does have its limitations. Um, certainly if one does a good job on a stress test, it tells us with a high degree of reliability that your heart is good. But uh, there are times that the, the stress test doesn't give us all the answers or basic stress test doesn't. We need to move on to some more uh, uh, what we call imaging stress tests that give us more information. We can combine echocardiograph or echocardiology techniques with the stress test that give us more information. Or at times we can use nuclear imaging techniques to give even greater accuracy to what the stress test may tell us. Mm -hmm. Now with the nuclear stress test, you'll do the same type of exercise that you would on a treadmill but you'll have an intravenous in your hand, and as you exercise, you'll be injected with a radiopharmaceutical or nuclear medication. And this medication, which is a radioactive medicine, can travel through the bloodstream, settle in the heart, 
and give us even more accurate information about how your heart is doing on special imaging techniques we do after you exercise. And that's safe for patients? It is safe. Um, you know, it is medical radiation. Um, uh, again, uh, uh, we always, when it comes to using radiation, want to use the least amount we have to to keep things safe for a patient. But actually, the doses that we're using here, though theoretically can cause harm, they've never actually been proven at this level to individually cause harm to a patient. Mm -hmm. The amount of radiation involved is similar to what would take place if you had a CAT scan, per se. Or we're all exposed to a certain amount of natural radiation just living on the planet. And the amount of radiation in a typical stress test is comparable to what would happen just living three years on the planet. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, we're nearly dealing now with an older population folks who sometimes have limitations on their ability to exercise, and if one can't do an adequate amount of exercise on a treadmill, the test won't be as accurate as we'd like. Mm -hmm. And in those situations, we have the ability to do what's called a pharmacologic or chemical stress test. And there we can give a medication by vein that is potent but safe and has the ability to simulate some of the effects of exercise on the heart. And we combine that with imaging techniques, most typically nuclear imaging techniques. And we can do a full measure of how someone's heart is doing, even if they're not able to exercise. Now, Doctor, are, is there a certain age that these tests should be like a preventive measure? Or is this just after you're having symptoms yeah, or possibly a problem? Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, somewhat debatable in the medical literature. But there's no set standard that's saying mm -hmm. that at a certain age you should have a screening test like this, like there would be, say, for mammograms mm -hmm. or colonoscopy or something like that. Um, you know, sometimes it's felt if someone is uh, getting up in, in years in their 50s or more and want to get involved in a more aggressive regular exercise regimen, there may be a purpose of doing it there. But typically it's a symptom that would trigger that the need to okay. move ahead and get a stress test. And all of these tests are offered at Mid-State Medical? They're all offered at Mid-State Medical Center. The, uh, um, again, the electrocardiogram is something that would typically play, take place in your family physician's office. That's mm -hmm. something they would do and use that as a starting point. And at that point, if they had concerns based on your symptoms uh, uh, um, or concerns based on what the electric, electrocardiogram would show, then they can either, if they're comfortable themselves, arrange an order stress uh, testing for you, or they can refer you to a cardiologist who might be in a better position to decide what the right test is for you and also be able to help you understand the results or interpret the results with you and guide you as to what this may steer us to uh, do for you. Very good. Well, great resources over at MidState. We'll put the information up on the screen there. Uh, you can contact MidState Medical Center. It's located right in Meriden. Uh, you can call 1-800-DOCTORS or simply visit midstatemedical.org. Doctor, thank you so much for all the information. Yeah, thank you.